Today, we're going to take a look at how to use some of the key new features in the latest release of JetWoo Builder from Crockerblock, and specifically, how we can use it to build a custom cart and checkout page with Elementor. So let's hop over onto the computer and start building our custom WooCommerce pages right now. Once you've gone ahead and installed the plugin, there's a couple of things we need to do before we actually start building anything. The first and the most important thing is to set up and configure the tools we actually want to use. To do that, all we need to do is hop over into the Jet plugin section, and from there, we're gonna come down to Jet Woo Builder settings. Inside there, we have three different sections. We've got the available widgets, which is what you can see right now, and these are broken down into key component sections. You've got your global available widgets, and these are global options or global widgets we can use throughout our entire site with Elementor. We then have broken down into the various widgets for each specific template section. So for example, the single product available widgets, archive, archive category, shop product, and so on. So if you don't want to use some of these, you can disable them just to make the whole interface a lot easier and nicer to work with. However, it's also worth bearing in mind these widgets will generally only show up when you're editing that particular type of page or template. So for example, when you're taking a look at the archive products, and you're creating a template for that or editing a template, you should only see these options alongside the global available widgets. So it streamlines and refines the interface to make it a little easier to work with without having all of these different widgets and options available throughout every single page or template that you work with. So it's great to see that option available. Next up, we've got the product thumb effect. Now, we can enable or disable this, and if we enable it, we can control how our product thumbnails are going to be displayed and how they'll animate. So for example, if we enable this, we then have a range of six different options we can choose from. And obviously, you can set this up to be whichever method you want, or you could disable it and leave it with the default WooCommerce style of thumbnail effect. Up to you, which you want to use. I'm gonna set this up, and we're gonna say fade. Then finally, we've got the miscellaneous tab, and this is to enable WooCommerce pages template styles. Now, if you're wondering what this actually does, it just helps you make sure that no matter what theme you're using, that any inconsistencies with the styling from the JetWoo Builder plugin will be given priority, shall we say. So I would recommend checking this for most use cases, and this will force the theme that you're using to render the styles that you set up or have been set up as part of JetWoo Builder. So once that's done, we've now set up the basic settings and we can take a look now at the next set of options we have available to us. If we jump over into the WooCommerce section and come down to settings inside there, we've now got a new tab called JetWoo Builder. And you're gonna find you're gonna be coming back and forth to this quite a lot because once you create templates and you set things up, you're gonna come back into this JetWoo Builder section to enable them to be used over the default WooCommerce counterparts. So let's take a look what we have. As you can see, we've got a range of different sections, shop pages, single product archives, and so on, and quite a few different options. Now, once we start to create templates, we can assign those to the various different parts. So for example, if we're using a custom archive product page, we want to set that up and choose what particular template is going to be used on there. We're gonna come back to those as we go through. And in this first video, we're gonna concentrate, like I said, on the checkout and also the cart page. In other videos, we'll take a look at the accounts and create a custom account section, and also in a separate video, how to create the archives, the products, upsells, and all those kinds of useful things. But before we do any of that, we need to come to the top, and you can see it says widgets render method. If you're using Elementor, we need to enable this and come down to Elementor default. So we're gonna choose that, come down, and just simply hit the save option. So we'll save the changes on there, that's now saved it, we can work with this inside the Elementor editor. Now, one little thing that I would like to say, if the developers over at Crockerblock are listening, where you've got a long section like this with lots of different options and you've got a save button at the bottom, it would be great to see that save button also positioned at the top right-hand side or somewhere a little higher up so it stops us having to scroll through. A silly little thing, but when you're back and forth to a page like this with a lot of options, it does just make our lives that a little bit easier. So if you're listening, devs, please put that little save option at the top and at the bottom of these pages that have a lot more information on them. That being said, what's next? Well, now we're ready to start creating the template files. We're gonna start off with the cart template. Worth bearing in mind, you need to create two templates for lots of different sections throughout 
this particular plugin. That is the cart page needs to have an empty template and also with products in it. So you are going to create two and assign both of those. If you don't create the two and you don't assign both, anyone that's not assigned will fall back to the default WooCommerce template, so you won't have any errors. You'll still have a template assigned. It may just not fit in with the style of your site. Always worth bearing in mind. So how do we create these? Well, it's very simple. We're going to come over into the Jet plugin section and choose the Jet Woo templates option. And inside there, we can now start to create these templates. And it's worth noting at this point, we are not using Elementor Pro. We're still only using the free version. So JetWoo Templates gives you all that custom template options without the need for Elementor Pro. So worth bearing in mind if you just want to customize your WooCommerce stores and you don't want to go to the expense of purchasing Elementor Pro. You don't actually need to. So now we're simply going to create our first template. So let's click Add Template. And from there, we're going to just choose the option for cart. Give this a name. We're going to call this default cart template. And we'll just say create that template for us. That'll then take us into Elementor, as you would expect. If we scroll down the left hand side, you can see there's our options, our widgets that are available as part of this checkout page. And like I said earlier on the video, the nice thing is we're only seeing the global widgets and the ones that are relevant to the template or the page that we're currently working on. So these first four options are the global widgets. The next five current options are, are specific to our cart page. So let's just build our custom cart page. We can use these options and we can just drag and drop these in and then we get full control over editing and styling and making sure everything looks exactly as we want it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to just drop in our first element. So to start off with, we're going to say we want to drop in our cart table. Now, our cart table just shows us anything we currently have inside our cart. As you can see, it picks up the styling. Everything is nice and tidy. We can select this and if I want to, I can add in a little bit of space. So let's just say we want to put 50 pixels above and below. But we can customize this. Anything inside you is fully customizable. And you can see if you look down the left hand side, we can control the styling on pretty much everything. Table headings, cells, images, all those kinds of things. Come to the image, for example, we can adjust the size of the image. So we can say we want to make that a little bigger. We'll say 120, for example. We can drop a border on there if we want to. We say we want to put a little solid border on there. We can do all those kinds of cool things. Titles. Exactly the same again, so we can control all the look and style of this. So with that being said, we can now go ahead and add any next step that we want inside you. So we've got the cart inside you and we've got update, but that's it. That's all we've got. So we need to add a couple of extra things back in. Let's come back over to our widgets. And from there, we can do a couple more things. Let's just add a new section in with two columns. And from there, we're going to just drop in a new widget. So on the right hand side, we're going to say we want to put the cart totals. And that'll give us a nice total of the cart values. And then on the left hand side, we're just going to put in a button that allows us to go back and continue shopping. So let's just come back into the queue and we're going to say we want to say return to shop. We've got full control over everything inside you like we saw before. But for now, let's just leave it as it is. And we can just simply hit the publish option. Now, if we go back and take a look at our site and open up the cart page, let's take a look at what we can see on there. I've switched over to our demo page and we're going to take a look at the basket. So let's open the basket up and you can see what we currently have is the default layout. We don't have that back to continue shopping button. We've just got the default layout. So we need to do one thing before we can actually get our custom layout to display on here. Let's come back into our dashboard and let's exit out of this and go back into our WooCommerce settings section. From there, we're going to open up our JetWoo Builder. And like I said earlier on in this video, we're going to be back and forth here quite a lot as you set these different templates up and tell WooCommerce and WordPress to use our custom designs. So because this is the cart option, we're going to come down to the cart section. We're going to say enable the custom cart option, and then we're going to tell it what template we want to use for our normal default cart. Let's just open that up and you can see there's our default cart template that we've just created. Now we need, still need to create the empty cart template and we'll come back to that in a moment. But once we've done this and we come down and we save this option, we'll go back to our demo page and we'll refresh this 
and there's our customized version of this. So you can see, while it still looks very familiar, it looks the same pretty much as what we just had, because we haven't really customized anything, we've just built up the component parts the way that we want. We've got our return to shop button is now inserted into here as well. So let's just jump back into here, into the dashboard, go back to our template and add something else in. Um, we're gonna come back in like we did before, we're gonna come into our JetWood templates and we're gonna open up this with Elementor. Now, I'm only going to show you briefly how you can use this particular function, but in a future video, I will show you how you can get in and start to customize more options inside here. So we've got these options for return to shop and so on. So let's just set this now to go to the bottom of the page so it looks a little bit more in keeping with what's going on, or the bottom of the section, I should say. So that's the first part of our cart sorted. So let's just update that. The next thing we need to do is create the empty cart template. So like we've done before, let's exit out to our dashboard and from there, we're gonna come into the Jet plugins and into our Jet root templates, add a new template. Again, set this to be the cart option and we're just gonna call this default empty cart template. And we'll create our template. Once that's done, we can start piecing together the layout. Now to handle the empty cart side of things, if we take a look at the widgets we have available, you can see we've got an empty cart message and that's what we're gonna use alongside the return to cart shop, or return to shop, I should say. Select this and make a bit of space at the top like we've done before. So again, we're just gonna put 50 above and below and then we're gonna come in and we're just gonna choose the option for empty cart message. Drop that inside there and that's now, we've got a fully styled empty cart message, but we can, like I say, style this in any way you want using the options on the left-hand side. Next up, we're just gonna come in and we're gonna create another section underneath that and we're gonna put this to be like so. And then we're just gonna come back over and we're gonna grab that return to the shop. So there we go. We can tweak this and we can just say, we wanna just change the spacing on there and we'll put that to 10, for example, and link the two of those just so we get the right value. There we go. So we've now created a custom empty cart option. So we'll publish that. And again, we just need to hop back over into the settings for WooCommerce and into the JetWoo builder options and just tell it what template to use. We're gonna come back down to our custom cart template and just choose our new empty cart template from there and just set that option and just save things out. So we've now created our cart. We've also created our empty cart option. So the next thing we need to do now is create the template files for our actual checkout process. So once again, from our JetWoo templates, we're gonna add a new template. This time we're gonna set this to be the checkout option and we're just gonna call this default checkout template and we'll create that. So now we can just go through and just use the new set of widgets that we have available to be able to create our custom checkout. Now you can see again we've got those first four options which are the global options and then the next seven are all to do with the actual checkout stage. Now there's two different widgets inside here that I would recommend not using on this particular template. That's going to be the option for the checkout login form and the check on checkout coupon form. They're going to be using the second template we're going to need to create. So don't use those at this point. We need to create a second template to reference those particular widgets. So we're gonna set our design up, we're gonna keep it fairly simple and clean and straightforward. We're just gonna set a two column section. And again, we're just gonna make a bit of space at the top, a little bit of space at the bottom. And from there, we're gonna just drop in the widgets we wanna use. So for this first part on the left-hand side, we're just gonna use the simple option for billing form. Drag and drop that inside there. And on the right-hand side, we're gonna come back over and we're gonna just choose that our checkout shipping form. So if we're choosing a different option for the shipping address, we'll have that on the right-hand side. So a really simple layout so far. I'm going to come down underneath and we're just going to add in a couple more sections. So we're going to set this up like so. And we're just going to add in a couple more widgets. So let's come over. And the first one we're going to do is we're going to simply drop in the payment option. So we can say check out payment, drop that inside there. You can see that allows us to choose what payment option we want to use. I'm going to come back to our widgets that are available. We're also gonna do then a checkout order review, which will pop above that. That'll give us the breakdown of the order, the pricing and so on. All those kinds of things are inside there. And if we wanna do something like notes, for example, we could do exactly that. So we could come in and we can say we wanted to drop in a checkout additional form at the top, and there we go. So we've now got additional information, or we could just drop that onto the left-hand side. Entirely up to us how we want to set this up. Styling, again, we can simply select a widget and we can come in and we can style that widget. So. 
let me just choose this one and we're going to come to advanced we're going to just add in some padding of about 50 pixels on there and once we've done that we can basically style this any way we want to to make it look pretty much any way we want so we want to add a little bit of background separation on this we can do that we can drop in a border around it if we wanted to so we can say we want to put a solid border set that to be one pixel slightly darker gray for border radius if we wanted to however you want to set things up it's entirely up to you you can get as creative as you want and that's the beauty of this is the fact that we can do whatever we want when it comes to the design side of things so with that being in place we'll hit publish on there and that's the first of our two templates created for our checkout now before we go back to the settings and apply this let's create that second template just to save time so again we're going to come back out of this back to our dashboard back to jet plugins and the templates and we're going to add a new template in again we're going to come to the checkout and we're just going to call this checkout template top create that template and then this is where we can drop in those two key widgets that we need just for the top of our design so what we're going to do is come back over to the left hand side and we're going to use these options for the coupon and the login form so let's create a new section a 50 50 section like so come back in and we'll just drag those widgets over so we want the checkout coupon we're going to drop that to the left hand side and the same goes for the login option so check out login form drop that inside there add a little bit of space in above so we'll just set that to be 50 at the top there we go and we'll just set that to be published okay so we've set up the two templates so what we need to do now is jump back into our dashboard back into our settings section underneath woocommerce and back into our jet will build a section and we just need to enable now our custom checkout so in the same way as we did with the cart we did enable our custom checkout choose our checkout template which is going to be the default checkout this is the main part of our template and then we've got the top template which is going to be checkout template top and we've now created that stage as well so let's just save that come back over so there's our cart We'll scroll down to proceed to checkout and we'll click on that and then we can see there's our custom checkout page like i say it still needs a little bit of work to make it look as nice and neat and tidy as you want but because we have full control over everything it is incredibly easy to do just that so we can choose to ship to a different address you can see we've got click here to enter our coupon code which is our top section and if we weren't logged in we could have that option over on the right hand side to log in as well so all those different sections are inside there we can now go back in fine tune and refine this to get exactly what we want to make sure everything is perfectly in keeping with the overall design of our site now this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with JetWoo Builder but this video covers some of the key new features added to the latest release so these options should help you get way more creative with your e-commerce websites with Elementor and JetWoo Builder. Now, I'd recommend taking a look at the playlist on screen right now for getting more out of WooCommerce and how to create more unique custom designs. The link's also in the description below. Now, if you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up as that really helps the YouTube algorithm show my videos to a wider audience. However, if you didn't enjoy it, please feel free to give it a thumbs down and smash that button twice as this seems to work pretty well too. If you'd like to be notified as soon as new videos are released, be sure to hit that subscribe button and smash the bell icon to be notified. As always, all of the applicable links for everything covered are in the description below. My name's been Paul C, this has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.